joined by joined by Indiana coach Terry Moore. We have Mackenzie Holmes and Sydney Parrish. We'll start with opening comments from the coach. Well, we're very disappointed. Um, felt like we had a few more minutes. Maybe the outcome would be a little bit different for us tonight. Um, but I, I can't overstate enough how how proud I am and our staff is um, of our group and the way they fought. Um, you know, we got off to a, a tough start. You got you to pick your poison when you play a team like South Carolina. And uh, we were trying to, to uh, pack it in on Cardoza and, and um, make them beat us from the outside. And they, they hit the first couple. Um, and then we had to adjust defensively, give our kids credit for always being able to adjust throughout the season. Um, and then dug ourselves a little, a big, a, a bit of a bigger hole. Uh, you know, at one point, I think we were down 22, somebody said, and um, for us to be able to fight the way we did to get back into the game. Um, we won the second half, we won the third quarter, we won the fourth quarter. Uh, felt like the momentum was definitely on our side um, throughout. And, um, you know, we're disappointed because, uh, you know, we've been here before, but, uh, you know, we wanted to get to that next, uh, you know, advance and, and move on because we think we really do have, I believe this, a very special basketball team. And, um, you know, I'll end with how proud we are uh, of all of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, Mackenzie Holmes has been one of our greatest uh, players ever uh, to put on an Indiana uniform. And uh, we'll go down in history as one of the greatest. Um, and, um, and so, you know, I'm sad for her because I know she's sad that it's over. Uh, but her sidekick over there, Sid Parrish, will be back another year. And hopefully she will help lead this team um, in making that next step. Uh, should we, God willing, have an opportunity next year to, to be in a similar scenario. Thank you, Coach. Questions now for the student athletes. Row three, we'll start here. Uh, Amanda Foster inside the hall. For either of you guys, a lot of people thought that you wouldn't even come this close to a team like South Carolina, you know, the, whether it was the spread before the game or just people talking in general. What does it say about this group that you came so close at the end? Um, you know, we're a tough team and we're, we knew we were going to have to fight to the end. You know, we could have given up uh, after halftime and it could have been a really ugly game, but uh, we're fighters and I think we showed that tonight and um, I'm glad we did because I think it put us on the map and I think people realize uh, what Indiana basketball is and we, we weren't going to give up. We knew that we were going to fight to the end, whether that was for us to make it to the Elite Eight or if it was for Sarah McKenzie and Ariel for it being their last game. Like, I, I, we didn't want to go out with a, without a fight. Hi, Azar Johnson from Envy Sports. This question is particularly for Mackenzie. Um, being that this is your last game and you're a graduate, um, I always feel like when a player of your caliber or any player in, um, in any Division One program, they put in all the blood, sweat, and tears and effort that they put in and took this and helped contribute to getting this team this far. They've earned the right to speak to all their accomplishments or how overall their the overall career and everything that they put into to this program if you could please just share with us um your, your feelings and your emotions and please take your time yeah i mean obviously this anyone who knows me knows how much i love being a hoosier um and i just pray that any high schooler that is looking at colleges that they pick a school that they feel the same way that I felt about Indiana. But I know the transfer portal is huge right now, but I'm here for five for five years because I loved being a Hoosier and I, you know, loved every second. So I just pray that, you know, every student athlete gets to feel the way I feel about a school um, because they deserve it. It's an amazing feeling. Um, I wouldn't be this upset if it didn't mean so much to me. So, you know, accomplishments aside, um, I've met, you know, friends that have turned into family here at IU, um, people that I'll have with me for the rest of my life. Um, and I think that's the greatest accomplishment of all, is the, the experiences, the moments, and the people that I've spent five years here with. Um, and that's all, that's all I really have to say about that. But I'm just very, very thankful that Coach Morin saw something in me, offered me to play here, and um, that I've gotten the chance to play five years under her with some really, really special people. 
Howard McDowell at the next Mackenzie City. Congratulations to you both on the seasons you've had and Mackenzie for the career you've had. If you could each take me inside what the locker room was like at halftime. Uh, you guys are both among the leaders of this team. Were you speaking up? You know, what, what, what was the plan? How did you guys handle that ahead of the comeback that you had? I think in the locker room, we were really composed. I think we were really just, um, we didn't get too high, we didn't get too low. Um, and we were, everyone was really speaking their part, what they saw on the floor, or trying to make defensive changes, seeing what they gave us. Um, and I, I think the biggest thing was how composed we were. We didn't freak out because we were down big. Um, and I think that helped us going into the game. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Matt Byrne, SI Indiana. Um, for both of you, just there's been times this season where in the second half it's kind of gotten away from you, but tonight you guys fought really hard. What was it like in that third and fourth quarter to really be in the thick of it like that? Yeah, I mean, I you know I think that we knew we, it was capable. We were capable of coming back. We saw you know Tennessee do it in that um, SEC tournament semifinal. Um, we just had to stay the course, and you know, like Coach said, we battled. We battled our butts off tonight the entire third and fourth quarter, whether shots were falling or not, we kept getting back on defense, keep getting stops, kept making plays on the other end. So I'm just super, super proud that, you know, we didn't, our backs were against the wall and we did not go down without a fight. And, you know, that's all we can really ask for. Hello, the Hoosier Network. Sydney, in that third quarter, you had an 8-0 run that really sparked that comeback that brought you guys really back into the game. What exactly was motivating you in that, um, in, the, in those moments to bring your team back? Uh, just chip away slowly. I don't know if there was any motivation exactly. I think coming into the game, my biggest motivation was trying not to make uh, it McKenzie, Sarah, and Rell's last game. Last one. Just showing from Envy Sports, this question is for both student athletes. We're still within a month of March, which is respect to Women's History Month. If you guys could, who are some inspirations that turn you guys into the persons that you are today? Let's start with Mackenzie. Uh, the person sitting to my right and the person sitting to my left. Um, oh my I mean, Coach Morin has exemplified what a strong woman looks like, what a fearless leader looks like. Um, she's the most competitive person I've ever met in every aspect of her life. And, um, you know, I've been so, I've never had a female head coach before coming to college ever in my life. And um, the fact that Coach Morin has been able to guide all of us and lead all of us. Um, you know, there, there's really no one better, and I'm very, very thankful. Sydney? You know, going off of that, I completely agree with Mackenzie. Um, I told Coach Morin last year when I uh, transferred and came to IU, she made me fall in love with the game again. And I thank her every single day for that because she makes me enjoy playing basketball, whether that's in a game, in practice. She trusts us. She loves us. She wants to win for us. Um, and then, you know, Mackenzie. Uh, we said we weren't going to do this. I know, I know. <laughs> These are all the tears after the game. I think it's more just because it was the last time I got to be on the court with McKenzie. Um, coming here, I didn't think we would be as close as we are today. Um, but I can say she's a sister, more than the best friend. Thank you, student athletes. Appreciate you. your time. Good job, Matt. Good job, Sue. Questions for the coach? We'll start right over here. Yeah, Terry, sorry, sorry to do big picture, but going back to what Mackenzie said and Sydney said about their love of the game, about love of IU, um, is that the counterpoint to the NIL era and transfer portal era that maybe doesn't get discussed enough uh, in terms of being dedicated to the team and to your teammates and things like that, what they were talking about? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, everything is, the, the landscape has changed and we all, we all know. Um, and we all have to adjust uh, to it. Um, you know, I think for us, our, our biggest goal uh, at Indiana is, is, yeah, NIL is a, is a part of it, but the retention piece is so important. And the only way that, uh, at least I, I believe, uh, that you can get your kids to stay on your roster is is by having great relationships with them and loving them up and caring for them on and off the floor, um, impacting them, 
um, you know, they are they're basketball players, but the impact that you can have on their lives, you know, I want all our, our kids to, um, to be able to leave Indiana and believe that there's nothing, you know, in life that they can't accomplish and do. Um, and so our goal is, is retention. Um, and, um, you know, we've had great examples of McKenzie and the Grace Burgers and the Chloe Moore McNeils, uh, you know, that have stuck with the process, have stayed on our, you know, roster um, in spite of not playing a lot of minutes when I think about Chloe. And, um, you know, um, you know, I, I know that um, the NIL piece is going to be part of it, but um, you know, I'm still a firm believer that you can't have a roster with all kids, all transfer kids. I want a combination of both. I want to build chemistry. I want to build a team, um, and I don't know that you can do that, you know, with the transfer portal and by by uh, the NIL. Um, but uh, but I, I will say this: you have to have special kids that come from special homes. Uh, that have been uh, brought up with special parents that understand there's a bigger picture out there than NIL. It's can you can you take my daughter and, and when I drop her off uh, help her become a woman and that's what we try to do at Indiana. Hey coach Doug Farmer the AP. Yeah. The last minute that yeah. three the alpha timeout that Raven yeah. hit, Dawn said that they're looking to get the ball inside. You guys collapse yep. on them. Yep. Yeah. Was it one of those pick your poisons? Yes. Like you can't guard both. Sure and, was. Yep. That's exactly what it was. Um, we felt like we had them right where we wanted them, and then um, we, we, you know, we we gambled, and um, and Cardoza made the right play to kick that thing out, and um, she stuck it. So. Um, but we, that's exactly how we wanted to play it. Yeah. Uh, Christian Heinz from the Big Spur. What kind of physical challenge does Cardozo, uh, Cardozo bring to any game? Well, she's, she's about four inches taller than any kid that we got out there. Um, you know, what I, I am impressed with, um, you know, seeing her up close the, the way we did tonight was um, how, how good she is. Uh, you know, there there was a moment there where I feel like Mac was super physical, and she was um, almost dang near got her underneath the the, 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 the backboard, which is kind of where we wanted to drive her, and was still able to stay balanced. She has long arms, and come back and and knock down um, you know a shot right at the rim, um, and and not look. Um, uh, you know, not look awkward or off balance. It was like, this is a rhythm shot for me. I do this every day. And, um, and so she's a load. Um, you know, I think that uh, you, have to, you have to pick your poison, as I said with Doug, but uh, you have to, she requires a double team. She requires somebody that's either bigger than she is. Um, and if you don't have somebody on your roster that's as big as she is, um, you know, whether it's a dig, whether it's a double, sometimes it's a triple. Uh, you got you got to go at her because she is um, uh, very consistent around the rim, uh, as she's shown tonight, being 10 for 12 from the field. Um, Chloe Peterson, Indy Star. You mentioned Sydney taking the reins next year, and with these three Sweet yeah. 16s in four years, just how optimistic are you for next year and just the future of the program? Well, I'm always optimistic. Uh, that's just how you know I am, and. Uh, always look forward to what's next, you know, for our program. And um, we've done a lot of really, really uh, great things and have accomplished. This has been an unbelievable year, uh, especially when we started out the, you know, the, with the tough loss at Stanford. And I think everybody was wondering, you know, what's up with this team and will they have an opportunity, uh, you know, to, um, you know, get into the field and how far can they go? And then we rattle off 13, you know, straight wins and beat some teams and have a great Iowa win at home and, um, and, and, and so forth. And so, you know, I'm always optimistic. That's just how I've been raised. Um, and, you know, those guys that are coming back, this is a great experience for them, you know. They, it needs to sting. It needs to hurt a little bit. I want our kids, as I said to them, to walk out with their heads held high. But I want it to bother Bo. I want it to bother Jules. I want it to bother Chloe. I want it to bother Lily. You know, all those kids, Lexi. I want, I want it to bother them. Uh, and I, I know it does. 
I know it does. Terry, congratulations Thank on you. the season, Thanks, Howard Van Galt, the next. Thanks, I, I, um, two things, if I could. The first, you, you know, you've talked about the continuity, and you, you know, Chloe said she's coming back. Sid told us months ago that she's coming back. How much, when you look at the fight that the team had tonight, do you think that continuity plays a part in allowing something like that to happen? Yeah, Howard, I just think they, they are so close. They are so connected on and off the floor. Um, you know, we are, we are blue collar. You know, we play with a chip. Um, we, 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 we are okay with people, you know, giving this an, under, an underdog role. You know, you know, nobody's talking about Indiana. And, um, and for some, some teams that have had the level of success, that might really bother them. It doesn't bother us. It's like we're just we're going to show up every day and we're going to uh, practice together and we're, we're going to work hard and we're going to be aggressive. And whatever game that, uh, you know, is next on our schedule, we're going to try to fight like crazy to, to win it. And uh, we're going to do it together. We don't care uh, who scores. We've had balance, great balance. I mean, at one point, we were the most efficient team in the country. You know, that's a team that shares the sugar. They love each other. Uh, they're connected. Uh, they don't care who gets the – they don't care who scores. They just – they want to they wanna win games. And, um, and, you know, you're always excited when you have the chemistry. And ours has been off – uh, you know, out of this world the last four or five years, uh, and I think it'll continue. But we have had great examples of what chemistry, good chemistry, looks like. You know, and um, Mackenzie's been a huge part of that. Here, and then this is the last one. Go ahead. Just the, the second part of that, real quick. It's it's to your point that you made at, at the last part of your answer there. To have Mackenzie as an example going yeah. forward, you know, how can that? be um, used within the program, yeah. you know, in order to continue that, sure. you know, uh, as a legacy yeah. when she's done. Well, you know, the, the way that we can honor Mackenzie, the way we can honor Grace, the way we can honor the Allie Patbergs that have been in our program is by doing exactly what they, they do. And they show up and they do more than what's required. And that's, that's part of the recipe for us. Um, we're, we're, we're not a team that's going to come in and just look forward to a two-hour practice. I'm going to have kids in there before practice. I'm going to have kids that are going to stay after. I'm going to have kids. I have to adjust my meeting times usually with my staff because they are scheduled on the half hour, on the 40-minute, you know, with, with those kids that are coming in and doing extra. That's what it requires. Not, not just the two hours. What are they doing outside of practice time? And that's what Grace Berger, you know, every day. Every day, Mackenzie Holmes. Every day, and um, and so it's it's cool when you bring in kids and you, and you you say you're an outlier if you're not going to do this every day. And we're not for everybody, but if you're willing and you want to get better, this this is a place you probably want to think about because um, our staff we're going to be in the trenches. We're going to roll up our sleeves. We're going to help you develop and get better uh, in your time here at Indiana. And um, you know, I think we can we can we talk about Grace Berger, uh, you know, the career she's had, the career Max had, uh, and so forth. We we got great evidence that the way we're doing things is working for us. Last one, quick, please. Um, yeah, Coach. Hi, um, Azar Johnson from Envy, Envy Online. Um, for one player that I think, even though she only it shows in the stat sheet that she didn't score much is um, Chloe Moore McNeil. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned and, her. And the energy that she brought. Yeah. The minute she came off that bench, the minute she came back into the game, everything changed. Yeah. If you could just speak as to what her value, I know you talked about uh. Taylor Nui, but her value to the team, especially yeah. like tonight or any other day. She is as tough as a $6 steak. She really is. <laughs> she is as tough as they come. And um, she has been our leader all year. Uh, she is, um, gosh, she, you know, what I'm so proud of her is that she is quiet by nature. But when I tell you, she gets in those, those huddles and she leads and she, she gets uh, in the right way, Folk, you know, gets in our, her, her teammates. Like, we need you. We need you to do this. Um, you know, if you uh, are around her, you just you you quickly um, love Chloe because she's a great teammate. But uh, when it comes to competition and never ever backing down and never being afraid of the moment, she's not afraid of the moment. And um, 
She's been, and I'm so grateful she's coming back. Um, you know, it's the, it, that's the thing about these kids is you never want them to leave, you know. But um, we, we're, we're grateful, and, and uh, we know this. Well, at least we'll get her another year uh, to lead this basketball team. So I appreciate your, your question. Coach, thank you very yes, much for your you. time.